So it's been a while, and I thought to get back into the swing of things, I saw Kingsman 2 the other day, so why not review it? Matthew Vaughan's one of my favourite directors, and the first Kingsman sort of came out of nowhere for a lot of people, and it was definitely a surprise, especially in America, where it had an alright opening. It just kept making money every week. So it's like, some people saw it, thought it was amazing. They tell the friends, then they tell the friends. The, the anticipation for the second one was at an all-time high for me. Because Matthew Vaughan's never done a sequel. So what was it about this that he wanted to come back to? There must have been something there. He didn't do Kick-Ass 2. He passed on Days of Future Past to actually do the first Kingsman. So there must have been something here that he thought, yes, this is the story that I need to tell. And this is one of the biggest disappointments for a film that I've known in the last, in recent memory, to be honest with you. It's just not that great. There's a few things and it's just frustrating because of how talented Matthew Vaughan is and how highly I regard him and how good the first Kingsman is. So to put it in a nutshell, let's say the first Kingsman starts off at 50 miles an hour and then... By the time the film ends, it's at 100 miles an hour. Perfect. Works for the film beyond belief. The Golden Circle starts off at 150 miles an hour and then just keeps going and stops at like 1,000 miles an hour. The biggest issue is there's so much going on in the film. Like Channing Tatum and Jeff Bridges, all over the marketing, all over it in the film, like this much. Channing Tatum is in it at the start and then the end. I'm going to talk spoilers in this just because I feel like I have to to get my point across. So if you haven't seen the film, don't watch this. Colin Firth's back and he shouldn't be really. That's that's the main thing. I think that's the biggest issue with the film. When you bring him back with some convoluted way of how he came back from the dead, there's no stakes. All the stakes have been thrown out the window. Because then, when Roxy dies and Merlin dies, there, there's nothing there. Why should we care when they go? And like I said before, there's so much going on. There's the destruction of Kingsman. There's the move to Statesman. There's Eggsy trying to balance his personal life and his relationships. Then there's the villain plot. Then there's that weird bit with the president and that whole subplot. There's so much packed into this film. That it just doesn't work. And don't even get me started on that Glastonbury scene. That's just that's just weird. Why that's in the film, I've got no idea. The film starts off well. It's it you you right back into the world and it definitely feels like the sequel to Kingsman, which is which is really good because the world I'm a fan of. I can get into it. But it just keeps ramping up and ramping up and doesn't take time to breathe and when it does take time to breathe like in the middle it lags a bit because they've got to take the time out to explain why Colin Firth's back and get him back and the film needed to do that but they shouldn't have put themselves in that place in the first place. Julianne Moore who plays the villain she's in a completely different film to everyone else she is hamming it up to no end and Elton John's in this film. I thought he was just going to be in like a quick cameo. Now, I don't think, I don't mind the Elton John stuff as much as other people. But he just, like, he keeps coming back. And then he's mid, he's like fly kicking someone in the face. It's, it's mental. But there are some good things. The cast, the cast are amazing. Colin Firth, though, I would have rather him not have came back. He's still got the chemistry with Taron Egerton. And that's what made the first one so great, I'm assuming. That's why they made him come back for this one. But Taron Egerton's something else, man. He's incredible. There's, there's little emotional moments that he does throughout the film. And it's just like, you are going places. He is the heart of the film. And with all of these actors in it, and he's the best, he's amazing. And when Shannon Tatum and Jeff Bridges are in it, they're good. I just wish the plot of the film was the introduction to the statesman instead of just, oh, here are the statesmen, look at all this that's going on as well. And the groundwork that was made for the third film is welcome in my eyes because I love the world. If they do end up doing the third one, they need to go back to the basics. 
They need to just focus on the characters, focus on what's important, and don't do about 20 different subplots. Mark Strong is great again as Merlin. He's got some great moments. All the cast have some pretty good moments. It's just the film as a whole. Like I said, there's just so much going on, and it's just so amped up. It doesn't really know what it's doing. So really big disappointment considering as much as a fan I was of the first film. And the action in this film. You get Colin Firth and put him in one of the best action scenes that's ever been put to film with the church scene. And this film, it's as if they knew they couldn't top it. So they just didn't try. In the Secret Service, there's so many different types of action around that church scene as well. At the start of the film, there's the parachutes. There's everything. This, it's all fighting, and it doesn't even try to be as inventive as the first film at all. Surely you'd go, I know we probably can't beat that scene, but let's try anyway. Like I say, the cast are great. If they do a third one, I'm up for it, as long as they go back to what made the first film great in the first place. I'm just going to have to go back and watch Matthew Vaughan's other films, I think, just to remind me he can actually make a good film. Anyway... I've got some more videos, they might be there, they might not, if they are, have a click, that's it, that's all I've got.